South Africa has been in the news lately because of the attacks on foreign-owned businesses. The origin of this issue is not new to the African continent and exposes a larger issue concerning Africa's historic economic struggle. So today, I wanted to take this opportunity to speak on the economic history of African empires and their struggle for ownership. <laughs> What up African world, it's on team here and I'm back at it with another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And as always, if you want to support the home team, you can do so on Patreon.com. I have some new rewards for you guys, so be sure to check that out. Also, go to Afrographics.com, a website where you can find unique illustrative infographics summarizing African history. All links to Patreon, Afrographics, and home team merchandise are in the description box below. For some time now, South Africans have been taking physical action against other Africans they deem to be economically undermining their society. These attacks began to be more prominent when South African truck drivers started a nationwide strike to protest against employment of foreign drivers. This began during hard times when many South Africans were struggling to find employment and to just economically empower themselves. However, the argument seems to have evolved into a security issue as well, as some South Africans claim that Nigerians in particular are selling drugs or causing crime. They claim that Nigerians and other immigrants have completely taken over some of their cities, like South Beach and Durban, and parts of Pretoria and Cape Town. Regardless, these grievances seem to center around an economic issue. This has become a really controversial topic because of the violence perpetuated on these other African ethnic groups in South Africa. This issue gets other African countries involved and tensions heighten amongst multiple people when they feel their ethnic group is being targeted. This issue has boiled over in Nigeria as some have retaliated. Historically, the struggle over Africa's resources has been at the core of most of the continent's issues. As I look at the grievances of South Africans, I can't help but see the weight of the economic problems that have plagued that country for so long and I sympathize with that. At the same time, as an outsider looking in, I also can't help but wonder why South Africans never seem to have this same energy for the massive wealth disparities between the minorities in that country and the majority, and we all know who the majority is. The distribution of wealth and access to resources in South Africa is daunting, but I digress. As mentioned before, I wanted to take this opportunity and speak about African empires and their relationship with owning and controlling their economy, because this is certainly not the first time Africans have fought over ownership and economic empowerment. Let's take a look at the role economics have played in African empires. The first classical empire of West Africa, Wagadu, was founded by the Soninka people roughly around 600 CE. The main source of wealth for Wagadu was no doubt its gold. Gold was a luxury item that was largely traded for salt. This stone was carefully controlled and regulated by the Seneca kings as they knew the importance of ownership. Wagadu kings regulated the amount of gold leaving the southern mines to ensure that the marketplaces never became overrun with the precious item as enormous amounts would surely devalue the precious stone, which is an intelligent and important economic strategy still in use around the world today. These kings made rules about the ownership of gold, making gold nuggets only accessible to them and gold dust accessible only to merchants and traders. Wagadu's gold became a valued entity around the world as Africans, Arabs, and Europeans sought its use. The economic success in Western Africa was well known to the Arabs and it rivaled the economy of other places around the world. One transaction absolutely shocked Ibn Hakel as he witnessed a merchant from Adugas writing a check with a statement of debt owed to a man from Sildramasa. The check, according to Ibn Hakel, was in the sum of 42,000 golden dinars. Ibn Hakel was so amazed by this that when he returned home, he made sure to mention it amongst his peers. I have never seen or heard anything comparable to this story in the East. When I told it to the people of Iraq, Fars, and Khorasan, it was considered remarkable. Wagadu in West Africa in general was distinguished in the world for its legendary wealth which led the Arabs to say, against the camel's mange use tar, and against poverty make a trip to the Sudan. 
So the kings of Ogadu knew the importance of maintaining the stronghold on their economy as they became a target for Arabs and Europeans. So they made sure to profit from it by imposing a tax on foreign merchants seeking to do business. Al-Bakari noted that merchants had to pay a one gold dinar tax on imports of salt and two on exports of salt. Going further south in Zimbabwe, Shona kings and noblemen knew the importance of owning their economy and controlling the trade. Around the 16th century, Portugal began to gain some power and influence along the southeastern coast of Africa. They saw the wealth of the Swahili coast and the flourishing trade routes between Africa and the rest of the world. They no doubt wanted to take advantage of that and control it. Their main goal was to dominate the trade with India, but the kings of Mwenemutapa made sure the Portuguese simply became mere carriers of luxury goods between Mwenemutapa's sub-kingdoms in India. They weren't able to get a stronghold until the many succession disputes within Mwenemutapa led to their decline. Even then, independent Shona warriors called the Razvi did not allow the Portuguese to gain this economic dominance in the region and went to war with the Portuguese forcing them from the plateau altogether. This was a direct revolt against Portuguese dominance, against the control of an age-old trade that gave the Shona masses amounts of wealth, helping them to construct the largest stone structures south of the Sahara. The struggle over ownership and economic empowerment for the advancement of state can also be seen in West Africa with the Moroccan invasion of Songhai. One of the primary reasons Morocco invaded Songhai was for control of the gold trade that the Songhai no doubt had. The Moroccans were not at all in the dark about the riches of the Songhai. Al Sadi describes this awareness as follows. This Sadian army found the land of the Sudan at the time to be one of the most favored of the lands of God Most High in any direction, and the most luxurious, secure, and prosperous. Morocco fought against European powers who pressed in from the north and the Ottoman Empire who pushed its way from the east, so Morocco had to maintain the integrity of its state. Morocco was in danger of overstretching itself militarily and financially and needed some new resources of men and especially revenue. Al-Manzor, the sultan at the time, strived to increase the state income and the main way Morocco paid for its expenses was from gold coming from the Sahara the gold trade of course being dominated by the Songhai. So to increase their revenue, the Moroccans had to own the gold trade, hence the Moroccan invasion of the Songhai Empire. So as we can see, the stakes for economic empowerment and especially ownership has always been high on the continent. As African history is littered with the struggle over resources and the answering of the question, who owns what and why? And it seems as though the struggle in South Africa hints at this economic dilemma. It would seem as though the weight of this problem lies in the hands of the South African government, as they need to be providing their citizens economic opportunities. If the South African government does not instill into the hearts of the South Africans the feeling of ownership of their economic destiny, then they may continue to witness this violence and struggle, a struggle that has no doubt plagued African history and world history for quite some time. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help out in its continued production, you can do so on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey.